Good morning guys, welcome back to my allotment diaries and in this video I'm going to be sharing all the seeds I'm going to be sowing for my allotment garden in the month of February. Hi, my name's Emma and a few years ago I got my first allotment plot. These videos are my allotment diaries and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. So first of all I have to say don't get too far ahead of yourself. As you can see behind me the garden is very bare and bleak at the moment and that is actually on purpose. I don't tend to sow most of the things that go in the garden until March, April time. Um, some of the things don't even get sown until May and June. That's just because the soil is not warm enough yet, the days are not light enough and there's not enough light and we still have a risk of frost. So most things get sown later on but there are a few things that I sow in the month of February either because they need a really long growing period or because I've just found they work outside. So we'll get straight into it. One crop that needs a really long growing period is chilies and peppers and I have three varieties here that I'm going to be sowing this year. These two here are from a company called Seedcraft which send me a box of seeds every single month. It's a subscription service and they send you the seeds that can be sown that month and it's a really great way if you are a beginner and I have to put a disclaimer here that I am sent a free seed box every month to try out. I do have a discount code below so you can go into the description and you can get some lovely seeds sent to you every month. It's a little bit easier than having to think about what to grow every month and if you're if you don't have the time to do that then it's a great it's a great time saver basically. Chilies and peppers need a really long growing time. They don't like to be planted outside at this time of year because it is too cold. They are warm loving plants but you need to start them now. So the three varieties I'm growing are the spiralus sweet pepper which looks absolutely incredible. My neighbour grows these and says that she gets an absolute abundance of these every year. So these are going to be started inside in a seed tray along with the chilli pepper hot lemon and the sweet pepper golden Californian wonder. These seeds are really small so what I'm going to do is get a seed tray and just scatter some in and then pinch them out when I'm going to pot them on and then they won't go outside probably until May, June time when it's definitely warmed up. Another crop that I love to start in February is my tomatoes. Tomatoes need a really long growing time. Now you can just buy tomato plants and some years I do do this. I don't always start them from seed. They are actually quite easy to start from seed though, that's the thing. The seeds are very tiny, yes, but don't be fooled. They are actually great at growing, they're great little growers and I've never really had a problem potting them on. Um, I've never managed to kill them, basically. So if you're looking for an unkillable seed to start and then pot on, I would go for tomatoes. Tomatoes are survivors. I have three varieties here and one that I haven't brought yet. So the three varieties I'm gonna grow this year here are crocchini, tomato F1. This is a late blight resistant crop. Tomatoes are notorious for getting blight so anything that says blight resistant I'm very happy with particularly late blight. Late blight is the one that comes later on in the year and absolutely wipes out your crops and you just have to pull them up and burn them. Um, early blight you can sometimes deter and get rid of so it's the late one that's the problem. I'm also going to grow the tomato Roma VF so these are great big plum like tomatoes really delicious i have grown these before and they've worked really really well and from seedcraft i have been given the tomato black moon never tried these before but i'm very excited to try these the variety that i don't have here is my absolute fundamental gardener's delight if you have never grown tomatoes before grow gardener's delight it grows in absolute abundance it's so easy to grow so easy to look after i get tons and tons of tomatoes from that so gardener's delight you can always buy them as well as plants like i said if you go to your local garden center probably around April, May time, they will have tons and tons of little tomato plants and most likely they are gardener's delight because it's just the easiest one to grow. Absolutely delicious, super easy. Go for gardener's delight if you're, if you're a first time tomato grower. Right, so here's my tray for tomatoes. I'm gonna sow all three of my varieties into this one tray. Got some really nice fine compost in here. So these are the Roma tomato seeds. You see how teeny, teeny, tiny they are, but have faith in them, they will work. I'm just gonna do a couple in a row, just along there. Just a few in a little row. I'm not gonna cover them up yet because I'm gonna sow my other ones as well. So this is the crocchini, crocchini ones. It's always better to put your seeds into your hand before you put it into anything else because you can control it a bit better. There's not many here, so it should be okay. Just drop those in a little row. 
Finally, we're gonna do the tomato black moon. Again, pour it into your hand. I'm just gonna add a label in so that I know exactly where they are and then we'll just cover them over with a little bit of fine compost just so the seeds are covered and then I'll just press it down a little bit and this is just to make sure the seeds get good contact with the compost seeds need to have contact with compost to grow so I'll just press them down a little bit give them a water and pop them on a sunny windowsill and that is my three tomato varieties sown There are a few herbs that you can start at this time of year, but only indoors. Don't put any herb seeds outdoors at this time, it will not survive. Three herbs that I'm gonna grow from seed this year indoors in February are basil, chives, parsley, and I actually have four, I've got one more, oregano. So these are all seeds that can be started inside now in a seed tray and they will need pricking out, putting into a pot um, and then putting outside when it, it's much, much warmer and it's much sunnier. If you don't fancy sowing herbs and seeds, buy them as little plug plants from a gardening centre um, later on in the year. They're usually only a couple of pounds and you will get an absolute abundance of herbs. You'll get herbs all summer from them. So you don't always have to sow from seed. I'm a big advocate for just buying some plug plants or particularly for sowing directly. I, I live in a really small terrace house and I don't always have the room to sow everything from a seed and I don't have a greenhouse. So if you're like me, just wait later on in the year and you can sow them directly. However, having said that, there are a couple of plants that I always sow directly at this time of year. Leeks, and these are from Seacross. These are the blue, blue soleils. I will be sowing something a little bit controversial but if you watch this channel on a regular basis you'll know how successful my parsnips are. I'm going to be sowing my parsnips at the end of February directly outdoors. These are the Gladiator F1, they're my favourite parsnips to grow, you do get some really big whoppers from it um, but they're also really really tasty, delicious, very sweet if you harvest them after the frost. I'm a massive believer in sowing your parsnips and you know what, I don't even cover them with fleece now, I literally just make a drill in the soil, put in some parsnips, cover them over, water them, look after them and they grow, they just grow and they grow so well. One of the reasons that I do it this time of year is because the slugs and snails aren't out in full force yet and so I find that I get a lot less slug damage when I plant them in February but they just grow and they're just a great thing to whack in the ground. Let me know if you sow some parsnips this February and let me know if they survive. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they will survive. A few salad crops that you can sow but you will need to cover with a cloche or one of those big, what they call those little plastic glass things that you can put over the top. You could, there's some lettuces that you can sow. Just check the back of the seeds to make sure that you can sow them from February. A lot of them say March, but I'd say towards the end of Feb is probably okay. So this is the red salad bowl. I have grown this a few times. I've got some seeds left. Um, and this is fantastic. You can actually harvest this within 10 to 12 weeks from planting it, which is great for a really, really early harvest in the year. Um, obviously, radishes can go in now. Um, radishes can go in at any time, and usually they do okay. I would cover them and cloche just in case we get a frost. Um, I don't know how they're doing the frost. I have a feeling they might suffer a little bit, so I would probably just cloche them. But radishes are a great shout for whacking in the ground anytime soon. These are the sparklers sparkler three also I, I imagine you could probably whack in the salad onions now onions can be sown from a seed i always tend to do my onions and my garlics from bulbs or cloves whatever you want to call it onion bulbs um just because it's easier but i'm not doing it this year because i've got that pesky onion bug thing which is just oh no the white rot that's what i've got I've got white rot and um, i'm not supposed to plant any onions or garlic on my plot for a couple of years now so do look out for diseases like that and just steer clear of things if you do get them. So let's sow that lovely radish and lettuce that I have selected. I'm going to put them straight outside into this vegetable planter which has been topped up with fresh compost um, about a month ago I would say. So I'm going to start with the lettuce and I'm just going to make a drill in the soil and a drill is a fancy name for a line. We sow in lines for a few reasons. Firstly, because it's obvious to see what's coming up. So you know if it's coming up in a nice row, then it's most likely what you've actually sown. And if it's not in the row, it, it's probably a weed because weeds and new plants tend to look the same. 
it's also just much easier to weed around the rows and also to harvest. So you can see these lettuce seeds are really, really tiny. A great tip is to pour the seeds out onto your hand and then pinch them and just scatter them as lightly as you can. We want to try, we want to, try to sow really thinly, but we can thin them out later if we do it too thickly, which we're very likely to because, let's be honest, it's not easy to sow thinly. I'm giving it a good pat down because we need the soil to make really good contact with the seeds and that just helps it to grow. Next to that, I'm gonna pop in my radish seeds. So my radishes are the bright lights variety, one of my favorite varieties of radish to grow. It should come up within about 10 weeks. I would say in about eight to 10 weeks, they should be ready to harvest. The seeds are much bigger for radishes and I absolutely love sowing them. They are really good fun. So again, I am pouring them into my hand and then taking a little pinch and scattering them down the row. And then I'm just gonna cover in my drill with some more soil and give it a really good pat down again to ensure there's really good contact with the soil and the seed. And I'll just leave those uncovered and see how they do. Come and check back on my channel in a few weeks time and I'll let you know how they're doing. There are a few other things that you can do in your garden right now to warm up the soil and get it ready for springtime planting. Most of the things that I like to sow at my allotment is directly, so this is really, really good to do, is to warm up your soil. I like to put like cardboard down over some of the beds. I like to put some ground sheet over it and I like to mulch really thickly with nice big thick bags of compost. Add all the nutrients and minerals in and then the layers tend to warm up the bed. I've always used cardboard on my beds and it is a little bit controversial. I always get comments about the ink in cardboards and so this year I did do a lot of research. Black ink is generally deemed as safer for your soil than coloured ink. In coloured ink they can use some metals which can contaminate your soil but the research that I've done say that the contamination is very very minimal so it's not something that I particularly worry about. If you do worry about it, check what kind of ink it is. So if it's a soya base or a vegetable base, then it's going to be really safe for your garden. Um, and that's just something you can do to ensure, ensure that you're not contaminating the soil. But personally, I find cardboard such an amazing material. Firstly, I have so much of it all the time. It makes a great insulator for your, for your beds. It retains water and it represses all the weeds and I just find it so easy to use at my allotment plot and it's usually like it's free <laughs> it's just like free mulch so I use it all the time but I'd love to hear your thoughts on cardboard at an allotment plot and that is what I am sowing this February for my allotment garden. Obviously it's not everything that you can sow and there are some fantastic resources on the internet that you can look up. If you Google what to sow in February, there'll be a much longer list. But this is what I'm sowing specifically for my allotment plot. Like I said before, I like to do most of my sowing later on in the year when I can do it directly. I just don't have the space in my house to sow thousands of seeds and keep them all safe. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do subscribe to my channel and I will be back again next week. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye!